Alright guys, hey, how's it going? I want to go through Galatians now. So I'm going to do a run through through Galatians. There's six chapters. And I thought maybe I should start this one with a prayer. So, dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for all your blessings. And um, you know, thank you for your peace and your mercy and your kindness. And I pray that you'll bless this reading of scripture. And thank you for the scripture, your word. And... Um, Pray that, pray that you'll just bless all the listeners in their lives and help us all to understand you and your word better. Help us to uh, be greater servants for you, Lord. And I also want to pray for the families of the victims of the recent shooting in Florida. And um, just pray that you'll uh, give their families peace. And pray also for the victims, uh, families, and all the shootings in Chicago. And um, I pray that um, that justice uh, will be served, that um, the people behind these shootings will be caught. Lord, please bless the police officers. And I pray for you know victims of, of these kind of crimes all throughout the world. And um, <clears throat> just thank you, God, for this day, and in Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, I'm going to read through Galatians, and starting at Galatians chapter 1, verse 1. We got a greeting here, the first five verses. It seems that Paul does this for all the epistles. Basically, uh, Paul, an apostle, uh, not of men, neither by men neither by man, but by Jesus Christ, and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. And so, uh, this is really interesting, too. There's a lot just in this verse, just in this beginning greeting. But um, it makes me think of another one. I don't know if it was Philippians or Colossians where he said, Paul, an apostle by the will of God. And maybe I'll just go look at it really quick. Let's see here. Actually, why isn't this? Oh, there we go. Let me see. Oh, yeah, okay. Colossians, he says, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Kind of the same thing. A little more detailed in um, Galatians, though. Uh... So, there's like a lot of doctrine, I think, just in this beginning verse. So, Paul's an apostle, not of men, neither by man. Uh, but by Jesus Christ. And so, I think that kind of speaks to the deity of Jesus Christ, because, you know, he says, he's not an apostle of men. And, um, neither by man. So, not of man. I think it's kind of like not from men. He's, he was, he was made an apostle. He, he, you know, he's, he's an apostle for God. And also, he was made an apostle by God, basically. Um, And he's, you know, he's proclaiming the deity of Jesus Christ. Um, and then we see, you know, two, two distinct persons, Jesus Christ, and then we see, and God the Father, who raised him, speaking of Jesus, who is God the Father, him is Jesus Christ, from the dead. Two distinct persons, but clearly saying that Jesus Christ is God, but also that the Father is God. And, you know, it speaks of the resurrection. So there's a lot just in that verse. <clears throat> but let's go on to number two. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you and peace from God the Father. And um, I'm going through uh, Philippians expository, I think. I was going to go into more detail. I'm kind of starting on verse one, and I think. 
I read one of the commentaries say something, because he says grace, uh, you know, grace and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ um, a lot. And again, we see two distinct persons here. We see that Jesus is Lord. And, um, you know, it says something like, you know, true peace can only come from, you know, the grace that God gives. And then grace and peace are kind of connected. And, uh, but I'm sure the commentary, you know, goes into it better. But I, I can't even remember how to explain it really. But, uh, you know, we can't have the peace without the grace of God. So, and, you know, and the peace is, you know, it's, it's inner peace. It's peace with God. It's peace, you know, among the brethren, you know, peace in every way. So, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 4, he says, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father? He might deliver us from this present evil world. And so we see the language sometimes that, you know, uh, that we're not of this world, even though we're in the world, uh, you know, we're set apart. And that's where the term saints comes from, you know, that we're sanctified and that we're set apart in the Lord. And, you know, our home is the heavenly home. You know, that's what we look forward to. Uh, again, there's a lot of doctrine just in here. Um, talking about, you know, the, uh, Jesus gave himself for our sins, talking about salvation and, you know, the sacrifice of Jesus, um, and, you know, it, also how, like, the, the Lord willingly gave himself for us it's not that you know like his life was taken um you know he he had the power to do what he wanted and and it was by his power his choice um that the sacrifice was done and uh, according to the will of god So every time we, when we see God a lot, you know, it's, it's speaking of the Father specifically. And some people, you know, when, when they see God the Father and then they see the Lord Jesus Christ, they say, well, see, the Father is God and, and Jesus isn't God. But that's not the uh, necessary conclusion to that. You know, we know from many other scriptures that Jesus is God. And so um, God is just used of the Father. Um <clears throat> Anyways, verse 5, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Praises to God. Praises to the Lord. Um, <clears throat> so we got no other gospel from verses 6 through 10. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. And so immediately we see that this is not like Philippians or Colossians, where he just had high praises to say the church and encouragement and stuff. This is kind of like a rebuke, uh, and which I thought was kind of interesting at the beginning of it. You know, it, it's a greeting and he's saying, you know, hi, this is Paul to all the brothers and sisters, and grace and peace be unto you. And, and then he says, you know. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So he's like getting right into this. Uh, he goes from like, a, from like a happy, you know, to a rebuke. And so, And so I'm wondering, you know, it says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Is he speaking of from him, meaning 
God or meaning himself. Uh, speaking of Paul, I'm not really sure. Um, but anyways, uh, they're saying they're believing in another gospel. Verse 7, which is not another, but there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. And so, um, he's saying it's another gospel, and then he says it's not another, which I think means that, you know, it's not like an official, it's not a, it's not a gospel. So it's a false gospel. You know, you've been led to believe a gospel that isn't a gospel. <clears throat> but there are, be, there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which he have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And every time when I think about this verse, you know, I just think about the Mormons, how uh, <clears throat> Joseph Smith said that he saw an angel who gave him another, gave him, you know, the, the New Testament or whatever, the, the Mormon, the Book of Mormon, and how, like, directly opposed to that verse it is. That's just ridiculous. Uh, so don't believe in any other gospel. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. It says let him be accursed twice. Um, okay. It talks about receiving the gospel. For do I now persuade men or God? Do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So that's an interesting verse there. Um, let's see. For do I now persuade men or God? Do I seek to please men? Hmm. So, <clears throat> he always has, like, these rhetorical questions and stuff, obviously, you know. He's not so much asking his questions as, you know, like, he doesn't know and he needs an answer. It's more like he's making a statement with these questions. And, uh, obviously, Paul doesn't seek to please men. And, um, persuade men or God, you know. This is an interesting verse, so I want to look into it more before I really say a lot about that. Um, this is a rebuke, though, for them falling away, believing another gospel. Okay, let's continue here to the final section. This is the big one in this verse. Paul called by God, verses 11 through 24. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. And, you know, the language in the, in the King James Bible is so interesting. And, but I certify you, brethren, uh, that the gospel which was preached of me, it's not after men. So like us saying like, uh, I am certain, you know, I'm, I'm letting you know that this is certain, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And this is kind of restating what he said in the greeting at the beginning, that, you know, he was made an apostle. Uh, I guess we hear he's talking about the gospel, and, and, and the greeting is saying, you know, I'm, a, I'm an apostle, not by man, uh, but by Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. 
and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his Son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. So it's interesting how he says that, you know, God separated him from his mother's womb and called me by his grace. But when it pleased God, I'd really like to see what the commentators have to say about that being separated from his mother's womb. Um, you know, I don't know if that's really supposed to be talking about like when he was born, you know, um, or if he's meaning something else. I don't know. He was called by God's grace. Uh, To reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Saying that God knows that he's not lying. God knows his heart, his mind, his thoughts. Afterwards I came into the religions of Syria and Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God in me. So he's kind of just given his testimony here, basically, and it's such a great testimony that Paul has, you know, one of our biggest examples. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, I don't know, a lot of this it's kind of seemingly self-explanatory. I'm sure it could be gone into a lot deeper, but I don't really know what to say about a lot of this. But he's setting up, you know, further points for the next chapter, basically. That's why he's going over this. And, um, you know, he's talking about how God is glorified in him by his conversion. And um, this all has to do with God and not man. So I don't know. I don't know that I can dig into a whole lot of this deeper, but hopefully you know, there's five more chapters to go. So, But there is a lot here. Um, again, very good chapter. So I'll continue on. God bless.